I'm going to show you in this video how to graphically add vectors. You'll see down here at the bottom, these are the vectors given A, B, and C with their magnitudes and directions. I'm asking that we graph 2B minus A plus 3C and that we start at e, E6. Notice I have E here and then we'll start there. Um, before I do this, I need to do these operations. I need to double B, I need to go negative A and plus C. So I'm going to go over to Paint and I'm going to prepare these vectors. Now I'm over in Paint and I'm going to uh, prepare these, these uh, vectors for us. First I need to go 2B. Well, how big is 2B? It's twice the size of B, so that would be 2B equals 6.5 centimeters and since it's just the direction of B, it's going to be the same direction. Um, now I need to go negative A. This one requires some explanation. If I make a very, very basic um, compass here, or give me my directions, I have 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, and 270. Again, notice that this far is 180. Our vector is at 296, which is, you know, somewhere down here and this is A at 296. So negative A is the opposite direction. It's like putting the arrow on the other end of it. And as you can see, if I go the opposite direction, that this right here is 180 degrees. Now obviously this is adding numbers, this is subtracting. Since I don't want to go over 360, which most of us don't think that way, I'm going to subtract 180 instead. So that's going to be 296 minus 180 which gives me 116 degrees. So this is going to be the amount of A, 4.5 centimeters, at 116 degrees. That makes it negative A. And 3, 3C. 3C is 3 times this which is 6 and 1.2 or 7.2 centimeters at 214 degrees. Let me take these numbers and so forth and move them over to um, move them over to Publisher and we can do this. Now that I have our vectors prepared, I've pulled them over and you'll see that I have a mark here for where we're starting at E6. And the uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our, our protractor that I built today and I'm going to get that lined up. You will have to do the same thing in your on your paper when you do this to make sure that it's perfectly lined up. Obviously I can do that easier because I can uh, scroll a little bit. And now I need to put a, a mark, and I made little marks beforehand at 338. So somewhere in there, I guess. I mean obviously I can't be exactly right. Move my compass out of the way. So that's the line that I'm, I've got to be on. Now I've got to get this ruler. This is the part that I have not perfected, but we're going to fake it the best we can. If it doesn't go pretty quickly, I'm going to pause it, get it set up, and then we can look at it again. Ooh, that's pretty close. So, And realizing that for my purposes, I am actually worked pretty hard. I, I make sure that we actually get to a grid point. So if this doesn't work, I'll pause it. Okay, that's going to have to work. Okay, so, but I want to go 6.5, which is right there. Okay, so this is where I'm going to 6.5. I'm going to put a dot there. And since, I, again, I am actually making sure that we end up at grid points, I'm going to move this out of my way and straighten it up again because we're going to need that later on. Um, I know that I'm going to that point, so let me go ahead and put a mark. And let me move the dot out of the way. So that's where we are. Now I need to put an arrow from my start to that point. And on your test, if you do not put an arrow, it's not a vector. Okay, so there I go. That's my vector. This is 2B, and I might as well just put that there so that we have it. This is 2B right there. Hopefully it will write in it. Come on, wake up. No, oh, there we go. All right, so we have 2B right here. I'm going to make that so it's over the top. All right, let me pause, and then we will work on the next one. 
All right, ready for vector two. And just if you're wondering why I'm pausing so much, because that way if the computer makes a mistake, I don't have to go back to the very start. So now I want 4.5 centimeters at 116 degrees from here, 116 from this point. So putting my protractor, making sure that it lines up. There we go. 116 degrees is over here. Again, I'm going to take my mark. You'll just use a pen or a pencil. 116, somewhere in there. Sure, that's 10, 15, just over that, moving this out of my way. And there it again, I want 4.5 centimeters. So let's bring this over. And obviously this is much easier with an actual ruler. Getting close. There's 4.5, but I'm beyond, so I've got to tilt just a little more. That's going to have to be as good as we can get. So, oh, and there it is, right at that point. There's 4.5, so that's our mark right there. Go ahead, go ahead and take, actually, I can take this, copy it, and put it right there. That's our second point. Let me move the ruler out of the way. Back to where we're going to need it to begin with. And off to the side. And now I'm going to put an arrow to show the second vector. Which is right to that point, as close as publisher will let me. And then copying our little box here, only this one is negative A. bigger box. There we go. So we have negative A now. Um, now let me go ahead and pause it and then we'll work on the third vector. And now we're ready to go 3C. Again, I'm going to need my protractor, but it's going to be at this point now. Notice, no matter what I'm doing, I'm making zero to the right. Obviously that's easy here because I actually have to turn it to not be in that position. But when you're doing this, you should be thinking that zero is always to your right, 90 is always the top of the page, 270 is the bottom of the page, and 180 is to the left of the page. Well, let me grab one of these little marks and bring it over. 214 degrees. Well, there's 210, 215, so it's got to be somewhere in there, pretty close, and since we know we're going for a grid point, we're not too worried about getting it. Oops. Okay, let's get back to where we need to be. There it is. Okay, so now I need 7.2 centimeters. I gotta be above it now. There's 7.2, but I've got to tilt up a little bit. Let's see if this works. Pretty close. I'm sorry that this is kind of the a long way to do this, but it's the only thing I have. <clears throat> ah, and notice we're going to hit down at that point right there. So I'm pretty sure that that's it at this point. So grab that's going to be right there. Move this out of the way. Get it prepared for the next one. And then draw my vector down. Close as it will let me. Go ahead and copy over. And this one right here, I'll put it out of the way a little bit. This is 3C. Let me pause and we'll go to the next vector. And now we're almost done. Now you may think that we've found where we're going to, that's fine, but this is not a treasure hunt. What we really want is the resultant of all this. Now we could, you know, call each one of these one centimeter and do our X's and Y's, etc. But we're asking you to do this graphically, which means if you did it mathematically and all of this is wrong, you will still miss it. You need to be able to do this graphically. So now, what is our resultant from our start to our finish? And I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that we can it's actually there. 
that's our resultant. And I'm going to actually label it our resultant. Big ol' R right there for our resultant. Now, the question is, how long is it and at what direction? Well, let's find out. Bring over our ruler and find our magnitude. And of course, I'm guessing on the direction here. See how close? Oh, not bad. Oh, that's right. We have to be on the other side of the ruler. So it looks like pretty close to 3.2. So we're going to go with that. Uh, let me just make another box here. So make it so that we can see it above everything else. And I'll make it big enough. So R equals 3.2 centimeters. Let's move that out of the way. We don't even need to turn it now because we have that. And apparently at 220, somewhere around 230. Sorry, yeah, 230 degrees. Move the protractor out of the way. And this, folks, is our answer. This is how you do graphing vectors. Yours will not look like this, though I guess if you know it could. Uh, but the procedure is always the same. Prepare your vectors, do your vectors one at a time from your starting point from the end of each one, and then your resultant is from your very start to your end.